You're working on a project and need some code from an external code base. After some research, you find out that Git has a mode called submodules. That will make it easy to include the other repository within your code. So you tell your coworkers and get told that you should never use submodules. As they look into your eyes, they start to talk about failed builds and complex workflows. You see the horror on their face and wonder, is it really that bad? So what's the deal with submodules? This is Tools on Tech and today we are exploring the joys and horrors of Git submodules. I'll start with talking about why it's hated so much, followed by a couple of tips to avoid common pitfalls. Finally, I'll open up the terminal to demo a few common tasks. Buckle up, this video is not for the faint of heart. Let's start with what some modules really are. In short, it's a directory that points to a specific commit in another repository. Let me show you this on a small diagram. On the left we have our repository and commit B points to commit C in the repository on the right. Now commits are how Git references it, but in practice it usually means a commit that's attached to a tag like version 1.5. Say you want to upgrade your submodule to version 1.6. Then you would make a new commit, D in our example, and point that to the commit for version 1.7. Sounds easy, right? But in reality, it doesn't always work out that way. Now you're probably wondering, why the hate? In practice, submodules get a lot of bad use, resulting in problems that are a pain to deal with. People that have experienced that really don't want to go through it again. The first reason that it's confusing, it uses a different set of commands and Git is not known for its consistent use of command line switches. That means you need a whole new set to keep track of and nobody has time for that. The second reason is that when you're switching branches, the submodules don't auto switch by default. This is on purpose, as you might have changes in the submodule that you still need to commit. But it also confuses the hell out of people that forget to update the submodule. These people then spend hours debugging weird bugs, usually blaming Git afterwards because it's easier than to face their own stupidity. Finally, there's the issue that submodules are sometimes used to split up repositories that should actually be in a single repository. This results in a lot of pain, because making changes suddenly requires to commit in multiple places, and in the right order, usually with multiple pull requests, multiple code reviews, and harassing a lot of coworkers. So knowing this, how do you avoid these pitfalls? The first rule should be independent repositories, meaning that anything you link should be able to be developed on its own. If you can't test released and version a submodule on its own, it shouldn't be a submodule. Even worse, if you need to sync up changes between two Git repositories, you really need to rethink your structure. I would highly recommend watching the Git flow video. Another one, and a bit of a cop out for many, is good documentation. Having a procedure for updating submodules, for example, always update a submodule in a single commit, meaning don't add anything else. That way you can have a clear commit message saying something like switching module X from version 1.5 to 1.6 to add feature Y. Finally, having a limited amount of maintainers of the main repository, or at the very least, as far as submodules are concerned. Upgrading versions of dependencies can break a lot of things, so it's wise that the right people have a look and help out. 
Now that we have the main ideas out of the way, let's have a look at how to use submodules on the terminal. I'm going to open one now and have a look. I'm going to do a quick demo of submodules. I created a fresh git copy and on the right you will notice that there is a git log and a file tree. These will update while I work so it should be easy to follow along without me constantly doing git status type commands. Let's start by adding a submodule I prepared earlier. So I'm adding the submodule using git submodule add and it will clone the external repository into the subdirectory subproject. Now, if I do a quick graph of this one, it only shows the single commit. But if we go into this subproject we just cloned and I run the same command, you see that there are more commits logs. So these two are totally separate repositories. Remember that, that when you're going into a subproject that Git changes around, so your directory becomes very important. Now, usually you do not want the latest and greatest version, but you want to include something like a stable version. So I'm going to check out version 1.0 of my submodule. And we are going to add it and commit it. Adding version 1.0 of subproject. Now, if you look at the git log on the side, you see that we've added a single commit and that the subproject is added. Next up, switching versions. Now, let's say we want to switch versions. That is as simple as going into the subdirectory and switching to the new version. Always make sure you have the latest code. In this case, it doesn't matter because we're using a local repository, but doing a git pull is just good habit. We're going into the subproject and I'm going to check out version 2.0. Now, if I go back to my main project, you will see doing a git status that subproject is modified. So we're going to add that and we're going to commit it and say updating subproject to version 2. You see the commit adding to the git log graph on the side and the new version is added. Now, one of the main confusing parts of submodules is that when you switch branches, submodules doesn't auto update. Let's switch back to our last commit to see what happens. I do a git checkout and then in this case, I'm using the hash to go back to the previous commit. And on the right, you see that hat is moved to version 1.0. But when I do a git status, it says subproject is modified, but I didn't make any changes. This is very confusing. What did happen is that submodule is still on version 2, as you can see in the file tree on the right. And it expects version 1. Now, to fix this, in this case, we do git submodule update and that will switch the submodule to the right commit, in this case version 1. On the right you see that the file tree is updated because I added a version text file to the submodule. And now if we do a git status, everything seems to be clean, except for the fact that I'm working in a detached head state, but that's part of the demo. So this is very confusing to a lot of people because Mostly when they're updating, say someone's working on the code and uh, another person is updating the version for whatever subproject they have included, they do a git pull and suddenly if they look in their code it says modified subproject and they didn't make any changes. Now best case scenario just start asking around and you do a git submodule update and everybody's fine. But worst case scenario, they don't know what they're doing. They want to continue working and they do a git add subproject and commit it. And then in effect, roll back the change somebody else made. This is one of the main pain points of subprojects. People that don't understand what they need to do with it, start submitting stuff that they shouldn't submit and things get rolled back. If you see this happening, make sure to go to your coworker and give them an explanation or you know, point them to this video. Now that we know what happens if people don't update their local branches, let's make things a bit more confusing and make a small patch to the submodule, but forget to send it to the local repository, in this case, GitLab. 
So I go into my branch and I'm going to check out master, make sure that I'm working on the latest version. I'm gonna do a sub module update, make sure that one's patched. And then I go into the sub project and there was like a, a small thing that needs to be fixed. So I'm doing a quick minus B, say this is feature demo forget. And I'm gonna touch a file, let's call it forget. Add it, commit it. And now I forget to push. If I go back to the main project and you do a get status, it will say that sub project has changed, which is obvious because it just made a change. So I'm gonna add that and I'm going to commit that adding a missing feature to some project. Now, technically I didn't add a missing feature. I just made a change to the sub project and I should be updating the version here. But for this demo, we're not going to version it and do it all proper. Uh, but this is one of the reasons why you want a version because now it's totally unclear uh, where the change is, where everything is at and what has been done. Now, let's say for example, that I have my coworker Bob and Bob wants to clone. So I'm gonna clone the submodule demo to Bob. And then if I go into the subdirectory where Bob is working, then to start with, subproject is empty. This is logical because you need to initialize submodule so git fetches all the code. That's not a big problem. Everybody working with submodule should know that. So we're doing a git submodule in it. And then we do a git submodule update to get the code. As you see, it starts cloning uh, and it gets this code from GitLab in this case, but we'll get an error message soon because it can't find the change I just made. There you see it. So it goes fetching submodule and did not contain, and then you get the full hash. This is the change I just made. So direct fetching of that commit failed. If we look into subproject now, there is no code. Now, if I would go back to say, for example, the last known working version, which was version two. So we're going to this hash and I do a git sub module update, then there's no problem. This is the latest working version and it's there, but we want to check out master and we want to do a git sub module update here it will fill again just like before because the commit isn't there. Now, to resolve that, Bob needs to get to me and tell me that I forgot to do something. I'm going to do that now. I'm going to the sub project, I'm going to push it and it's a new branch. So I'm going to say origin feature. I'm pushing my branched code to the origin one and then if we go to Bob and Bob does a submodule update, it should work fine. Now as you can see, now it does check out if I do a git status, his code is clean and the subject subproject has a forget. As you can see from this short demo, there is plenty of moments that submodules can get confusing, mostly when working with others. This is why I'm restressing always version and make sure that you know what the submodule is supposed to be, get tests in, because the change that I just made where I forgot to update the subproject if you have tests running, then the test will fail because it will try to check out the main code base, get the submodule, it won't be able to get the submodule, and me looking at that test will say like, oh, I forgot to push it, and push it through. So, submodules in themselves aren't bad, but they're harder to work with than Git on its own, and they result into many weird changes, mostly when you have to frequently make changes to them. Try to keep that to a minimum. If it's just to get external dependencies and versions, it works perfectly fine. Thank you for watching the video. Hopefully you have a better understanding about submodules and how they work. You can find links to resources in the description. Be sure to check them out. 
If you missed something or want to know about a specific topic, be sure to let me know in the comments or through any of the channels below. I'm releasing a new video every two weeks on Monday. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to click that like button, hit the subscribe, and if you want to be notified the moment a new video is released, then use that bell icon. It really, really helps to keep me going. That's it for now, and remember, you're awesome, keep it up.